Welcome to The Foundry, where leaders are forged daily. Each week, we investigate themes of leadership, entrepreneurship, and mindset with some of the greatest minds in real estate. And now, the data scientist of real estate, George Roberts. Welcome back, entrepreneurs. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Franco Perez, founder of Franco Mobile Homes. Uh, Franco has been featured by Forbes magazine, and he's one of the industry leading experts. And with that, I'd like to welcome you to the show, Franco. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I think it would be great for people who maybe haven't lived next to a mobile home park like I have to see that th things have really improved. You can have some pretty amazing construction just because it was built in a factory doesn't mean it can't be beautiful. And I guess mm -hmm. now we're talking about YouTube, you did mention it, but I know you do have some pretty great social media branding. And uh, just to back up for a moment, I mean, to be a success in any business, you need to master marketing, right? And in the business of investing, that often means selling yourself, so to speak. So I know you've launched a successful YouTube channel. You've got uh, www.franco.tv. And you also happen to corner the the tag sexy mobile homes on Instagram. So tell us about uh, digital marketing and, and how do you build a strong brand? Sure. Yeah. So as far as, you know, I, I want to point out that I had to, at 17, 18 years old, I had to stop doing school to work full time. I didn't go to college and that sort of thing. And, and I found out that there's this, I live my life off of this one word and it's being resourceful, right? Because of my struggle, because of the the pains I was going through, I had to learn how to better myself. And when you have that drive to use the resources to learn, you actually realize that the resources are out there. We have more resources than ever in history. Everything is out there on the internet. They're on podcasts, they're on YouTube. They're on Google. We can find any information that we can find. We also have ChatGPT now. Um, but with that, it's out there. And it's just a matter of how we take in that info and how do we utilize it, right? So I, I point that out because it's very important. But everything I've learned was actually off of YouTube, not through a college course or anything like that. It was through off of, off of the internet or books, right? Now, at every different level of phase of my life is where I focused on. It was very important for me to understand what to focus on and what to prioritize at that time. And during the marketing phase, I really deeply understood what are the core problems and what's the core issue around mobile homes and how do we how do we market that? And, and it's really through understanding what is the future of our business you know, during that time, we didn't have millennials buying homes yet, but we had, we knew that that was going to be the future. So we understood that younger generations are now more than ever learning through video, through visual, through visual learning, not books, not blog articles, not newspapers, right? And, and it's also one of our biggest weaknesses is that people have these assumptions and it's up to us to create visual representations of what we're accomplishing so that they can break those stigmas in their brain, right? We have to create, even, even if we're just having a conversation, we have to talk on video because they get that personal connection as well. And at the same level, I've always kind of had this, I think, I think everyone's different, but for me, I always wanted to prove people wrong. I've always wanted to shake up and make noise and that sort of thing. And and for us, like being able to call it sexy mobile homes is a contradictory, yeah. uh, it's a contradicting statement. It's like mobile homes are not sexy, but guess what? That little moment right there causes people to wanna like, what is this guy talking about? Click, holy crap, why is this guy looking through a beautiful, luxurious home? Holy crap, this is a mobile home, right? Yeah. Why is this guy calling this a mobile home? Then it immediately builds that piece of interest. And, yeah. and that's kind of, it's all a matter of how do we grab people? It's, 
it's exactly that sequence. I mean, real estate agents and real estate experts and claim that who who are experts don't even know what mobile homes are e either, right? And 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 we 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 teach through media. We you know, and, and I think people build their business around their personality. I'm ne I've never been one to be a super professional suit and tie person, but you know, we we do a lot of fun stuff. We make silly music videos about it, and, and just to build that attention, right? So, but that's kind of always been our style of marketing, and and really providing that personal touch. And and now our big focus is really education, right? So, how do we? teach them like how these are benefits, how financial education, how do you get out of that rental rat race? It's not just the visual, it's also the financial stability. How, what is, we talked about wealth gap earlier, but I also want to mention that I realized that it's not only a wealth gap, but there's also an information and knowledge gap. There's so much that I wish I learned in school, but isn't taught in school. And now having friends that are now super wealthy and that sort of thing, I'm realizing that their whole set of rules and how they understand things are completely different. They understand building that worth and they understand that money doesn't just go one way, but it goes as an investment for their future and that sort of thing. Right. But, and that, you know, that type of information is what we love putting on our YouTube channel because, because we want to bring that level of education to everybody as well. And, and to those that are passionate and to those that want to excel themselves, for financial security. Yeah, that's outstanding. And, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about how our educational system is broken. <laughs> that may be true, but I don't know that there was ever a time that the educational system was necessarily more healthy because you can go back to the 19th century, you can see people like Mark Twain who would say things like, uh, don't let your education get in the way of your learning. But what I see is different about today is not only is, is education free, but this is the time when it's easier to get that additional education that's so hard, it seems, to get even from a business school, right? Your business professor may not be somebody who's out there every day in the rough and tumble of the business world like you might want uh, to have, but you can find that sort of education from entrepreneurs like you on YouTube. And again, it's just totally free. And what I find is perhaps uh, most heartening is the sort of education that you can most easily find for free, it seems, is this sort of financial freedom education. It's precisely the stuff that isn't taught in school. So I hope that if we have some people who are pursuing that more standard route, and I think it's a great route to go. I'm actually a PhD myself. I, I have nothing against book learning, but there's just so much out there. So you can you can break off that path at any point and decide that you want to do something different. But great time to live. And again, yeah, people go check out uh, channels like Franco.tv. A lot of great stuff out there. Yeah. And, and and I think when one of the big things that I find when it does come to education is really having contextual learning. And I think when I say that is with you know i think with the younger generations and the future of people they want to be able to create an impact they want to be able to make a change but if you teach them how this education will allow for them to make an impact or make a change i'll be honest when I, up until i my parents divorced at 17 i was just going by school assuming i was learning everything passing step passing tests and that sort of thing but i honestly can't remember much about what i learned now when i tie the the learning with something that I actually want to make a change with that then unlocked a whole new level of learning. It's like, shoot. Okay. If, you know, if the biggest problem is marketing and I need to learn how to do marketing in relevance to mobile homes, because I want to help one single family be able to get, get financial freedom from our marketing. Then, then there I'm like, shoot. Okay. This business did this here and that worked for them. This business did this. And, and I'll actually learn, you know, what is the relevance? When, what's the context of how this can be practical in a business? And I, I think when you give people passion and their and a why before teaching the, this sort of thing, it really makes a huge difference.
Yeah, Stanley, I love that story of personal resilience and how you lived it. And yeah, just people go out there and find it. It is there to be found. Now, here's another place where stigma, I think, is hurting mobile home park and its expansion. And that's with banks, the financing. So uh, most banks don't like these things. So how do you get financing for your customers? Yeah, so that's actually an arm that we have. We have a finance apartment that we are building and and it's been getting better and better. I know eight years ago or so there was barely any financial options but now we're looking at now we're looking at 25 year loan uh mortgages um and and before it used to be like, like huge down payments but now we're looking at about 10 percent down which in relevance to the price points of single family homes is much more attainable right so 10 percent of like if we we're talking single family 10 percent would be 150k if, but if we're talking mobile homes in our area, it would be more like 30,000, right? Much more attainable, much more accessible, and for people to be able to get that um, and start their first home purchase, right? Right. So to clarify out there in the financial industry, there still isn't uh, proper financing for these things in general. So you just basically built it. You, you and people who recognize that, hey, this does make sense as an investment, just made it happen. Yeah. yeah. And, and we've, we, we've really been advancing like the lobbying and that sort of thing. And we're getting government backing and it's, it's really a beautiful thing because we're getting progress that way. Okay, good, good. Now uh, for, for the investors here that might be thinking, Hey, maybe I'm in multifamily or something related, some other form of commercial real estate. Uh, how do I get into this? Well, tell us first of all, about the mobile home outlook 2023. So we're recording this towards the end of the year, 2023. What do you think the runway looks like for mobile homes? I know you touched on it earlier. You mentioned that for the first time in many places, decades, we actually have new mobile home parks being built. So where, where do you think uh, things look like in terms of returns for investors? What would you look out for? Yeah, so there's always several different entities that we're helping and it's a it's beautiful about mobile homes it's like actually a thing that's great for society great for creating affordable housing and then there are the investor element and i think most of the investment side we're starting to see so much attention around these parks getting developed and it's it's a great thing if you ask me because we're taking old stock inventory beautifying it so recently there's been a lot of attention around the mobile home park acquisitions. There, there's huge entities acquiring these, building value by beautifying the clubhouse, the swimming pool, the, and creating, what do you call it, dog parks and that sort of thing for these communities. And then also the replacement of these old units to newer, call them sexy mobile homes, that sort of thing. So that's a big um, entity that, that we're doing now is that we're helping entities that want to purchase if they were to purchase a mobile home park, how can we raise the value of that mobile home park? How can we create more seven stones of affordability and and be able to progress that? But that's something that's it's a very big play. It's very, um, but it is something that's been done in many ways. So there's co-ops around it and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, great stuff. And so just one fun one before we head into the lighting round, uh, tell us uh, how these things get around. What is a toter truck? What's special yeah, about that? So, so toter truck, it's a, you know, I've always loved kind of construction. I love these big machines and that sort of thing. But toter trucks are basically um, how these are transported. And as soon as it's finished at these factories or assembly lines, that you need a special type of uh, semi truck to be able to navigate these very, tiny roads and and make these sharp turns because you have this huge basically what you'll see on a, the size of what you see on an 18 wheeler but they have to navigate it through tiny roads so they built this toter truck that's on several different axes as it goes up down side side forward and back and at every turn they basically maneuver this huge home or this huge half of a home throughout these roads and one you probably seen one of our videos where we talk about yeah. this type of truck and it's really cool when you actually see these being delivered and you see the team actually navigating and they go centimeters from a pole or 
or or from a tree and that sort of thing. And they really inch it in and out. And it's it's quite fascinating. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So yeah, learn about that and many more things at Franco.tv or on YouTube channel, but really a great thing and uh, very, very cool. That free education, I think you just can't underrate it. I mean, we are so lucky to live in a day and age where you can learn about things like that. And in the old days, that would have to be on job training. But I guess with that, uh, we're going to have to head into our uh, lightning round. I like to call it the seven. Are you ready? I, I, I'm as ready as I can be. <laughs> All right, Franco, let's go. All right, so if you could be known for only one thing, what would it be? I, I have a feeling like I should say mobile home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we'll run with that. Okay, good. So uh, what is the greatest lesson in leadership you learned as an entrepreneur? I'd say it goes back to what I talked about earlier is, is learning to helping people create an impact. And I think if you find, that's why I'm so proud of our team is that everyone in this, in our company cares about helping others. And I think when you give people that and, and a way to do it and, and you just let them be free, they will find a way to be able to help people. I still tear up today personally when I see a family be able to purchase their first piece of ownership and and that is what drives me every single morning to wake up early and and to work late nights it's not i think there's too much content out there chasing like how, how can you make 10,000 a month or whatever the, this number is but that only goes so far but when you find helping people is really a beautiful thing i think that's something that's that should be said very true. A very important and integral part of the entrepreneurial story. Glad we could get that out today. And then what personal characteristic has been most pivotal to your success? I think it's that word resourcefulness. Yes. Being resourceful. Um, like I said, every single huge problem that we have to tackle I take it upon myself to really deep learn that and 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 find information for myself, right? I think, and what, when I say that, I also come from experience of, you know, like hiring somebody that's been through a college marketing college versus somebody that's actually passionate about marketing. And in many times it's, it's the person that really is passionate about marketing that does better in, in, in many cases. But not to say that it's, you know, someone that's been through the college is not, but I think it's being resourceful is the, is the hugest thing. Outstanding. Yeah, we all have more resources than we avail ourselves of. So I love it. Hey, now let's uh, take a nod to the randomness in the universe. This next question could be anything from the trivial to the profound. Just let me know when to stop cutting the deck. Stop. All right. Here it is. Oh, if you could appear on any game show, what would it be? Huh. Um, I would say Wheel of Fortune, probably. Wheel of Fortune is, is a show that I feel would be kind of fun. Be great. Yeah, my wife always said I'd be good at Jeopardy, so <laughs> I'll yeah. have to run with that. I don't watch any game I, shows. <laughs> that's what first came up in my head, but I feel like there's a lot of facts that I wouldn't get right, but we'll see. <laughs> right. name a book that's helped to forge you as a leader and as an entrepreneur and why you know i love the lean startup and being in the silicon valley i've i've very fortunately met a lot of leaders and big companies and i think this is a good book to kind of understand how do you build utility? How do you become, um, how do you create progress and eliminate the noise of, of everything else? And, and it teaches you how to create a minimum viable product um, 
to be able to get feedback instantly. But I think that's a book that isn't really well known, but is mentioned a lot in many entrepreneurs in this area. Almost any book I've read it and that concept of the MVP is just amazing. Version one beats version none every time. And people, uh, particularly in the startup space, this, yeah, this is a way to uh, potentially pull yourself out of the quagmire and potentially take a failure and, and find success. So yeah, great book, totally underrated, should definitely be read more widely. Uh, name the biggest hurdle in your business in the last year and how you overcame it. As we started our business and we talked about prototypes and or MVPs, we were really like on our third ever built of home and all of our money, all of our funding were from investors and that sort of thing. And we had, <clears throat> what's weird enough is it's cool that these homes can be transported, but there can also be accidents. And there was an accident where this home tipped over and it was kind of a nightmare. <clears throat> and, um, um, with that, it put our cash flow to not knowing if we're going to be able to move forward with this dream and and that sort of thing. But very fortunately, we were able to get past it. We were able to get better funding options to get to get over that hump. And it was a dark time. There was some legal issues and and, and funding issues, but we always did what's right to our investors, to what's right for our customers, and that sort of thing. But that was probably the biggest hurdle business-wise. Yeah, outstanding. And I all these overnight successes usually take a, a decade or more. So yeah, it's important to share those stories. Can you give us a quote to help forge our listeners as leaders and entrepreneurs? Oh, man. Uh, quotes. Hmm. Let me think of a quote. I'll tell you then. what, uh, just a few minutes ago, I felt like you 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 just nailed it. We were talking about uh, the opportunity to help people in business. I mean, just give people a way that they can do that, you know, the, the sort of things that you see. So I thought that was just amazing. But uh, but I want to hear yeah. from you, like what off the top of your head, what is, it doesn't have to be like a personal quote, could be a famous quote. Uh, what really I'm drives you forward? I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek um, and and. The title of his book, I don't know if you'd consider it a quote, but it is Start With Why. And, and I think, you know, communication is a very important thing. And, and, and kind of like what we mentioned is like, hey, if we understand the why at a deep enough level, we will figure out the way to get there. Right? And, and I think starting with why and understanding how to define that why, not just for yourself, but for your team and for your company is a very important thing. Right, outstanding. Branko, I want to thank you for coming to talk to our audience today. But before we go, I want to make sure how do people reach out to you if maybe they want to invest with you or they want to just learn more? How do we reach out to Franco Perez? Yeah, all of our stuff is on that link you mentioned, the www.franco.tv. You'll see our 3D tours of the homes we build. You'll see video content of the communities, the how it's built and that sort of thing. Or you could just Google us at Franco Mobile Homes and you'll be able to find us. All right, outstanding. Thank you so much for taking your time to share your knowledge and experience with our audience today. Yeah, and thanks for having me. I love what you're doing. So so it's inspiring others. So I'm All right, thankful likewise. to be. Love your work. Thank you.